Hello friends, today in this video we are going to see about the vascular disorder of retina. In that particular we are going to see about the retinal artery occlusion. Before going to the topic proper, we are going to discuss about a few uh, things that is the blood supply of retina mainly. So first for the blood supply of retina, uh, the main blood supply of retina is with the central retinal artery. Okay, Central retinal artery is the main blood supply of retina. Along with it, the other branches from the central retinal artery, these are the branch retinal arteries. So with these two are the main blood supply of the retina. Other than the central retinal artery and the branch retinal artery, uh, another one artery which is known as ciliary retinal artery which is a branch or continuation of the long posterior ciliary artery this is seen in a certain people not in all so uh, ciliary retinal artery which is another artery uh, which also supplies the retina so any blockage in this three arteries causes the central uh, see retinal artery occlusion okay any blockage in these three vessels causes this disease okay so uh, this is the optic disc through which all the retinal vessels and the nerve optic nerve um, enters and exits so uh, before knowing this there is a covering over this region which is called as the lamina cribrosa so lamina cribrosa is a region where there is a covering uh, lamina cribrosa is a sieve like covering that uh, and that acts as a entry and exit route for that uh, nerves and vessels uh, here you can see this lamina cribrosa through which the optic nerve uh, central retinal artery and central retinal vein here you can clearly see all the three entering through this uh, lamina cribrosa so we have to know this lamina cribrosa also now we enter into the topic proper so central uh, see, retinal artery occlusion retinal artery occlusion is common in patients with hypertension and cardiovascular disease so causes we would see there are many causes first it is due to the emboli emboli means it may be a cholesterol emboli or a calcium emboli or a platelet fibrin emboli so what are these three emboli uh, what is the color of this emboli and from where it arises we have to see this so cholesterol emboli it is seen in the retinal vessel bifurcation it is orange and refractile arise from the atheromas in the carotid artery so calcium emboli is white in color it arises from the cardiac walls platelet fibrin emboli is dull white color and also arises from the atheromas in the carotid artery these two are from the carotid artery atheromas and this one arises from the cardiac walls so these three things we would see in images first one is cholesterol emboli then calcium emboli then platelet fibrin derivative emboli so you can see here this is the so here this is the first emboli which is also called as the whole and host emboli whole and host emboli which is also known as cholesterol emboli so uh, with this uh, it appears mainly at the bifurcation of the retinal artery here you can clearly see the bifurcation of the retinal artery where this uh, whole and host plate whole and host plaque or cholesterol emboli is seen now the second one uh, this is calcium plaque comparatively it is slightly white in color compared to that of the whole and host or cholesterol plaque and the third one is fibrin platelet fibrin plaque it is more here you can see it is more dull white compared to uh, the calcium emboli which is white in color so three embolies are the main causes first is whole and host emboli another cholesterol emboli then calcium emboli then the third one is platelet fibrin emboli okay then atherosclerosis related thrombosis so atherosclerosis takes place in all blood vessels from the time of birth so even in retinal blood vessels atherosclerosis takes place mainly here at the level of lamina cribrosa because at the level of lamina cribrosa the retinal vessels and the nerve enters and exits the uh, orbit so at the level of lamina cribrosa atherosclerosis is more prominent so this may be the reason for retinal artery occlusion then the third one is retinal arthritis with obliteration retinal arthritis means it may be a giant cell arthritis or periarthritis periarthritis may be due to systemic lupus erythematosus polyarthritis nodosa vaginous granulomatosis and scleroderma scleroderma these are the other reasons for retinal arthritis with obliteration then the fourth one is angiospasm angiospasm rarely causes this occlusion because mostly angiospasm causes amyrosis okay then raised intraocular pressure raised intraocular pressure in retinal detachment we are doing a surgery uh, this surgery is mainly to uh, attach the detached part of retina to the normal remaining retina this is done mainly by using a circlage so you can see in this image here you can see that the retina is covered by a circlet this is known as tight circlet this is mainly done for uh, retinal detachment surgery this is to prevent this is to attach the detached part of retina okay so if this circlet is very tight means this causes a slight increase in pressure it may also be over high so that it can lead to the uh, occlusion of the retinal artery then thrombophilic disorders thrombophilic disorders mainly it may be inherited disorders of anticoagulants like that way then rare causes rare causes may be retinal migraine sickling hemoglobinopathies hypercoagulation disorders so etiology can be classified into emboli Emboli, cholesterol emboli, calcium emboli, platelet emboli, cholesterol emboli is also called as whole whole host emboli. It mainly occurs at the retinal vessel bifurcation. Then it is orange and it arises from the atheromas in the carotid artery. Calcium emboli it is white in color and arises from the cardiac walls. Platelet fibrin emboli it is dull white in color and it is arises from the atheromas in the carotid artery. So then atherosclerosis related thrombosis, retinal arthritis mainly giant cell arthritis and other periarthritis, angiospasm, raised intraocular pressure due to the tight circle used in the retinal detachment surgery. Then thrombophilic disorders and rare causes may be due to retinal migraine, sickling hemoglobinopathy and hypercoagulation disorders. So other etiology now we are going into the clinical features. Clinical features as I already mentioned the main supply of retina is due to the central retinal artery which is 60 percent of the supply and occlusion of this is causes the 60 percent retinal artery occlusion then branch retinal artery and occlusion of this causes 35 percent and the rare cause it's due to ciliary retinal artery occlusion ciliary retinal artery is uh, not present in everyone it is present only in a few patients so five percentage of uh, occlusions due to the ciliary retinal artery occlusion it mainly supplies the maculary region and so if ciliary retinal artery is uh, not affected means macula will be spared in these conditions so now we see into the clinical features first you will see the central retinal artery which is a major cause here symptoms 
sudden painless loss of vision is the most common symptom. History of transient vision loss in the patient in the past. So previously there may be vision loss, uh, either may be due to atherosclerosis which uh, continuously consistently blocking the vessel. But sudden painless loss would be the main typical feature of a patient. So signs. So visual equity would be less than 3 by 60, 90% of the cases. Because in ciliary retinal artery is just applying the macula, that may be spared. So the vision may be improved in these patients having the ciliary retinal artery spared. So direct pupillary reflexes may be absent and RAPD is present. Related to afferent pupillary defect may be present. So absent pupillary reflex, RAPD is present. Fundus examination. This is the main part in this. Fundus examination, we would see marked narrowing of retinal arteries and veins. Because both the arteries and veins, there is a narrowing, but mainly in the retinal artery we would see. Okay. Then retina, there will be milky, milky white color. Milky white color, this is mainly due to uh, occlusion of the vessel which decreases the blood supply. So ischemia occurs and there occurs edema. So ischemic edema causes the milky white color of the retina. So cherry red spot. Cherry red spot is due to uh, because uh, retina is thin and paled. So behind the retina is the choroid which has a rich blood supply. So vascular choroid is shining through the thin retina. So cherry red spot means at the center of the macula, it is the vascular choroid which is we are seeing as the cherry red color. It is shining through the thin retina. So cattle tracking. Cattle tracking means in retinal veins there would be segmentation of the blood columns. There would be segmentation of retinal veins present in the here and there. This is known as cattle tracking. Then atrophic changes. Due to the uh, occlusion of the blood vessel, there can be atrophic changes. This is mainly here you can see attenuated thread-like arteries can be seen. Due to the occlusion, it causes the arteries to become attenuated. Then atrophic changes appears in the retina. Further, if occlusion persists, it can lead to optic atrophy only in long-standing cases. Okay. Then uh, you will see this in the images. First, here you can clearly see the pale uh, retina can be seen here. Here pale retina can be seen. Here at the center you can see the uh, cherry red spot which is mainly due to the uh, paleness of the retina and the thick uh, blood supply of the choroid which is uh, thin retina reflecting the uh, choroid vascular success. Then narrowing of the retinal arteries. Here the retinal vessels are narrowed. If you see a normal one you would uh, prefer, uh, prefer and find out this thinning of the vessels. So here cattle tracking of the vessel. So I said no retinal veins would be segmented. So this is called as cattle tracking of vessel. Here also you can see the cherry red spot. Okay. So these are the main features. First one is the narrowing of uh, both arteries and veins. Then cherry red spot you can see at the center this is due to the thinning of the retina. Uh, then um, cattle tracking of the vessel. Cattle tracking of the vessel mainly the retinal veins. This is due to the segmentation of the retinal veins. So these are the main typical features of the central retinal artery occlusion. So fundus studying images. So uh, OCT. In OCT there would be hyper reflexity with the thickening of the inferior retina. Uh, in these three you would see in the images. One is OCT, then autofluorescence, then FFA. So in here this is the normal OCT. You can see all the layers of retina. In macula this region would be thinned out. So in this see, uh, central retinal artery occlusion you can see that the inner retinal layers itself is thinned out. So you can see clearly here it is normal. Here you can see it is thinned out. So in OCT there would be thinning out of the normal layers. Okay. In autofluorescence, you would see reduced autofluorescence that you would see there. Uh, here you can see you no. Know, here it is comparatively reduced out of here. You can clearly see the vessels. Here you cannot see the vessels. It is reduced here. So here FFA fundus fluorescent angiography. The vessels are normal thick like that. Here in this you can see uh, in central retinal artery occlusion. The vessels are thinned out. Uh, so the thickness of the vessel can be varied in these two. So in fundus fluorescent angiography. Delay arterial filling. Delay arterial filling can be seen. Except in the ciliary retinal artery. And masking of the choroidal vasculature. Choroidal blood vessels cannot be seen clearly. This is due to the uh, retinal edema. Branch retinal artery occlusion, it occurs after the lodgement of embolus at the bifurcation. So, at the bifurcation from the artery, if there is any lodgement of embolus, as we already seen in the embolus, three type of embolus, mainly the cholesterol embolus is large at the bifurcation. If there is any lodgement of embolus at the bifurcation, it leads to branch retinal artery occlusion. So, retina distal to occlusion, uh, retina distal to the occlusion may be affected. It causes edematous with the narrowed artery holes. So, it becomes atrophied. And finally, it leads to sectoral visual field defect, which is permanent in nature. So, first, distal to the occlusion, there is edema and the artery holes becomes narrowed. This leads to atrophy, then permanent sectoral visual field defect occurs. So now let's go into the management. Management first, what is that? Retina survives if ischemia is less than 90 to 100 minutes. So whenever a patient loses its vision, he has to approach a nearby hospital within 90 to 100 minutes so that the retina can be uh, returned back to the normal condition. What are the treatment we would see first? First, immediately reduce the intraocular pressure using this follow following uh, using this following conditions. Then inhalation of a mixture of 5% carbon dioxide and 95% in oxygen. Then vasodilators, fibrinolytic therapy, IV steroids, and laser photo disruption of embolus. So first of all, reducing the intraocular pressure, intermittent ocular massage is given, IV mannitol is given, then IV acetazolamide 500 mg is given. Then paracentesis of anterior chamber is done in order to reduce the intraocular pressure. So all these are done to reduce the intraocular pressure. IV mannitol, IV acetazolamide 500 mg, intermittent ocular massage and paracentesis of anterior chamber. Then inhalation of mixture of 5% carbon dioxide and 95% oxygen is to reduce the angiospasm. So angiospasm is reduced by giving this mixture. 
then uh, after this we can give vasodilators vasodilators can be given like uh, nitroglycerin which can be given sublingual or transdermal then isosorbate dinitrate which is given orally both we have to give which, is, uh, which causes the vasodilation so retrobulbar injection is given uh, that is acetyl acetylcholine is given which causes vasodilation so vasodilators are nitroglycerin isosorbate dinitrate and acetylcholine which is given in a different routes then fibrinolytic therapy can be given last iv steroids iv steroids is given only in the patients with giant cell arthritis giant cell arthritis the main treatment is steroids so we have to give steroids for those then laser photo photo disruption of embolus Laser photo description of embolus can be last choice when other uh, other conditions fails. So last, then work up for associated systemic conditions. If any systemic conditions like cardiovascular conditions, we have to first uh, treat the central retinal artery occlusion and at once we have to do Doppler studies and echocardiography and treat the cardiovascular condition like that. So complication is known as neovascular glaucoma. Neovascular glaucoma, here delayed complication of central retinal artery occlusion, it occurs in 2 to 6 percentage. This also called as, uh, this also occurs mainly due to the blockage of the central retinal artery. So first we saw what are the blood supply of central retinal artery and then etiology etiology it is due to emboli calcium cholesterol platelet fibrin like that then atherosclerosis related thrombosis then due to arthritis like giant cell arthritis periarthritis angiospasm so angiospasm only we are giving the treatment here mm. to reduce the angiospasm we are giving inhalation of mixture of 5 percentage co2 and 95 percentage oxygen so angiospasm is one of the reasons then raised intraocular pressure is due to tight circulation then thrombophilic disorders you know congenital are inherited then rare cases like migraine, sickling, hemoglobin of this like that. So then clinical features we saw in that mainly that uh, visual acuity will be reduced. Then RAPD is present and the pupillary reflex are absent. In fundus, retinal arteries and veins are narrowed. Cherry red spot is seen. It is milky white in color. Cattle tracking of retinal veins and atrophic changes. In fundus studying images like OCT, it is hyper reflectivity with thickening of the inferior retina. In autofluorescence, there will be reduced autofluorescence. In FFA, in delayed arterial building and the masking of the core and vasculature due to the retinal edema. So, branch retinal artery occlusion, uh, we already seen the bifurcation to see. It causes edema and the narrowing of the arterioles, atrophy, and then leading to sectoral visual field defect. So, management, we already seen. But immediate reduction of intraocular pressure using mannitol, acetazolamide intravenously or ocular massage which is given intermittently then paracentesis we can do to reduce the intraocular pressure then inhalation of a mixture of 5 percentage carbon dioxide and 95 percentage oxygen is given to relieve angiospasm vasodilators like nitroglycerin isosorbate dinitrate and acetylcholine be given acetylcholine can be given in different routes for nitroglycerin sublingual or transdermal isosorbate dinitrate orally acetylcholine retrobulbar injection retrobulbar injection of acetylcholine also causes vasodilation then fibrinolytic therapy uh, then iv steroids for the cell arthritis laser photo disruption of emboli so with any other systemic conditions like cardiovascular disorders we have to first treat the CRMO followed by doing Doppler studies and echocardiography and find out the difficulties in them and treat the cardiovascular condition so complication is neovascular glaucoma so thank you for watching my video uh, please subscribe to the channel and follow the Instagram link given below like the video and comment any topics we have to cover over to the next upcoming videos thank you